Halloween is creeping up and I wanted to build something very special for this occasion. A creepy robotic eye that moves. Now this eye can add a lot of creepiness to whatever you embed it into. That makes it the perfect Halloween project. My name is Andre Esser and I build cool stuff, or at least I try to, right here on YouTube. I like to share the process with you guys so you can learn from my builds and most importantly, my mistakes. Got plenty of those. For this project I wanted to build an animatronic eye from scratch. There are already a bunch of designs out there in the wild. Probably the coolest one is from Will Cogley, crazy good mechatronics engineer that just happens to work at the same company as I do and literally in the same building. Can't believe I only found out about this six months ago. Anyway, why not just steal his design if it's so cool? Well my final goal is to eventually hide it behind a painting or poster that you can actually hang up on the wall so that you can have some creepy character following you around with his eyes. So the main limitation for me is that they spread out the motors all in the back and that would make it really hard to hide it behind a painting unless you make the frame really thick. So that's why my main requirement is to set up these motors vertically and the other constraint was to make all parts 3D printable. Mainly because that's all I got. But I started off by simply putting the motors in the configuration that I wanted to. I put two of them up vertically in opposite directions so that they have enough space to move their linkages. These two will move the eye up and down and side to side. I put two more motors facing the other way, one above and one below the other two motors. And these two are meant to move the eyelids. And from that it was easy to create a frame that would hold them in place. Challenge number two, I now need a frame that can actually hold the eye and the eyelids. The eye needs to be able to rotate in all directions, up and down and from side to side. And both of them at the same time. I saw a lot of eyes that use a universal joint, but since I wanted it to be all 3D printed, I went for the simplest thing I can actually 3D print and that's a ball joint. I like ball joints, no homo. Now I just needed something that can hold up the eye and snap fit onto this ball joint. First, I thought it would be useful to have a little bit of flex so that I could easily push it onto this ball. So I cut out four slices of the fitting piece so I can fit it in easier. That sure helped with fitting it in, but it made the piece a lot more fragile and the pieces just kept breaking off. So then I removed two slices. And yeah, the grip was stronger, but it still broke off. So should I do no slices? Yes, that's what I should do. Turns out the plastic is flexible enough to just let this ball joint be popped in without any need for the slices. It makes the connection a lot sturdier and the thing just won't fall out. Added bonus, I get to hear the satisfying pop. Now I wanted to design some linkages so that I can move this eye support and for that I needed them to be flexible so that they can move in both directions at the same time. First I thought about using these guys. Typically you can find these linkages in the steering of remote controlled cars. But these are not 3D printed. So guess what? I had to 3D print them. And they actually work way better than I expected. Really good that I can rely on my 3D printer for these guys from here on out. That's a W for the maker community and Big RC just took a big L. So I gave these a go, just straight up connecting them directly, but I quickly realized that was not working as expected. They're kind of just pushing them diagonally. I mean, they're set up diagonally, so go figure. So I had to redesign these linkages in a way that allowed the motors to push them in straight inward. So I had to add these turns. I still needed this thing to be flexible so that it can move in all directions. Still got this ball joint thing in the end. This actually worked really well. You can only see it moving diagonally because I'm using a servo motor tester that can only move both motors at the same time. But like, trust me bro, it works. So I finally made my first test with an actual eye. I basically bought these half eyes made out of acrylic. I put it on with any maker's favorite adhesive, hot glue. And yeah, the result was really promising. The eye moves. Still diagonally because I couldn't be bothered to write code to move these motors independently just yet. Time to add some eyelids. So I had already added these holders on the side of the eye to hold the eyelids. So I designed and got them 3D printed. The first time the print kind of failed but I could still use what I got to test the fit. And something was off. They were huge. There was a big gap between the eye and the actual eyelid. So I checked out the other animatronic eye videos to see if I can find some clues and one thing was obvious. Everybody got their eyelids on the inner side of the frame while I had mine on the outside. Obviously there was going to be a big gap because of that. So I redesigned them to put them on the inside of the eye. So I had to be careful so that there was still enough space for the eye to move without touching the eyelid. So I tried to simulate the space that I needed inside of the modeling software to make it as tight as possible. That's what she said. Printout 2 came out nicely. And there's still a big gap. I mean, the others have a gap too, but it's much smaller and they can still move the eye around quite comfortably. And that's when I discovered my second mistake. And this one was actually much bigger. I had put the center of rotation 
behind the eye. If you think about it, that's not really how eyes move. The eye rotates around itself. It should rotate around its center. Basically, all other designs were using hollowed out eyes, not these filled out ones like mine. And that meant I had to take two steps back now and redesign the whole eye support thing. The first thing I had to do was get some hollow eyes. That part was easy in practice, but it hurt my wallet. Anyway, moving the eye support part to the inside of the eye meant that I was gonna have to give up on a lot of space. So that also meant that I wasn't gonna be able to use the same linkages. That kind of sucked on one hand, but I thought they were too complicated anyway. So I started a new design. As you can see, it's quite a lot smaller than the first one, but it actually fits inside the eye. The new linkages will have to somehow fit inside these ball cups. Told you like balls, no homo. So I first designed these really thin ones, 2.5 millimeters in width. They actually fit and work really well without an eye attached. But once I glued the eye onto it, they weren't really keeping up with the weight. The linkages were simply too thin and flexible. So I made another one. These were thick. This kind of worked, but the cups were simply too small and the linkages kept popping out. So guess what? I had to design another one. After all these iterations, I actually ran out of black filament. So that's why you'll see this metallic blue from here on out. This is the new eye support. It takes advantage of the depth of the eye, but still allows me to connect the linkages on the outside. But guess what? That also meant I had to design new linkages. Another one. But finally, this design seems to do what it's supposed to. The way it moves is super cool and it's exactly what I needed. I redesigned the eyelids one more time and made them fit snugly around the eye. Then I put an actual eye inside it to see how it moves. Works as expected. It looks really promising for real, finally back on track. Now I just needed to get the eyelids moving. Not much to say here. I just designed some linkages that I could attach to the stems of the eyelids. Good news is that they move quite well. Bad news because the motor moves them in the same direction. They don't actually blink yet. I managed to hold off writing code for this long, but finally caught up to me. I used this ESP32 microcontroller. Only thing you need to know about is that it's better than an Arduino. If you don't know what an Arduino is, it's basically just a board that you can program to control other electronics. I bought some joysticks from Amazon, although I cannot recommend these at all. The only reason I use them is because they were a next day delivery and they had this button that I can click into like in a PlayStation controller. And I used that button to make the eyes blink. After all these ups and downs, I finally made it. Now that looks so freaking cool. Now what maybe doesn't look as cool is this mess of cables behind it. I didn't have time before Halloween, but I really would have preferred to put this all on a printed circuit board. And for that I would have used the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Now I've worked with PCBWay in the past, and I did get some printed circuit boards manufactured. They came out looking flawless. It's not only PCBs, they can also 3D print in all sorts of materials. So please go check them out. I can't wait to level up this project with one of their printed circuit boards. And thanks again PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now, the I was working, but it seems that I can't win without taking an L the second later. There was another oversight. The eyelids go against the slip of the vertical linkage. So the eye can look up, but it can't really look down. So guess what? I had to design another one. This time I made the linkage go down a bit earlier and I made it diagonal. And I went ahead and did this for the other linkage as well. I guess 43rd time is the charm. Anyway, success. Everything finally works. So for Halloween, I couldn't just have this guy over a cable connected power supply. So I switched the power supply to use these batteries instead, making the whole thing more portable. I added one little extra, this eye margin around the eyelid for a bit more pizzazz. Kinda reminds me of Pepe the Frog now. And you might have noticed this thing jitters a little bit. That was all because of the shitty Amazon joystick. So I removed the joystick and hard coded some funny animations. Now we're not done yet. It's Halloween, I made this whole thing portable, so let's put it inside a pumpkin. The recording. Awkward, but I'm gonna carve a pumpkin for the first time. No more awkward than we see. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. There we go. <laughs> Great start. I need to cut the top off. Let me just grab a knife, sharp knife. Just straight up. Damn, I need to have space to put like all of this inside. Do I need a bigger pumpkin? Oh man, that's too much. Already not following the tutorial. Um, 
Ta-da! The guy kind of carves out. Okay, you'll do that part. Okay, yeah, that's definitely faster than whatever I would do there. Look at her go! <laughs> yeah! Man, it's gonna be such a Frankenstein pumpkin. Okay, at this point I really said fuck the tutorial and I'm just gonna do it my own way. <laughs> Juicy! <laughs> <laughs> How does it look? Pun intended. Okay, now I need to somehow attach this and secure it inside of that. I'm gonna print something that I can either attach here or just I print a whole new frame and I can just, you know, stick it inside the pumpkin. You think the angle is okay? Okay, it's actually perfect. Are you happy? You well, I didn't, it's not, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Ahem. You might be thinking, well, it's kind of lame. It only has one eye, right? Easy fix. I think I could just put some LEDs in there. <laughs> kind of a stupid build. Check out how it looks outside. Now this guy is gonna be spooking people during the night. And if I'm lucky, I won't get my build stolen. All right, that was pretty cool. If you enjoyed watching this, please hit the like, please hit the subscribe button. I'm really trying to grow here on YouTube. Go check out one of my other videos, whatever YouTube is suggesting. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.